بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سٹوڈنٹس ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس اینڈ ادر ٹاپک ان دا لاسٹ لیکچر وی ڈیفائنڈ الیکٹرو اسٹاٹکس ایز دا اسٹڈی آف چارجز ایٹ ریسٹ اینڈ دین وی کنکلوڈیڈ دیٹ چارجز آر آف ٹو کائنڈس پازیٹیو اینڈ نگیٹو اینڈ چارجز آف دا سیم سائن ریپل ایچ ادر and charges of the opposite sign attract each other. Then we discussed the properties of electric charge. We said the charge has the property of additivity, charge is conserved and the charge we can be directly measured is quantized. Q is any where E is 1.602 into 10 is for minus 19 coulomb. So today I move forward and discuss another topic. Let me select my color background. I will use this one. Okay. So today's topic is Coulomb's law. You know, Coulomb's law is the force law of electrostatics. That means using Coulomb's law, you can calculate the electric force between two charges at a given distance. What does it say? It says if you have two point charges, Q1, Q2, separated by distance r, then there exists electric force between them. The magnitude of that force F is directly proportional to product of these charges Q1 and Q2 and it is inversely proportional to so care of the separation distance between the charges. So, when we change this proportionality to equality, we write F as K Q1 Q2 by half square, where this K is written as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. This K has value of 8.99 times 10 raised to the 9 Newton meter square per coulomb square. Newton meter square per coulomb square. This epsilon naught is called the permittivity of free space and its value is 8.85 into 10 raised power minus 12 Coulomb square per Newton meter square. This is the value of Epsilon naught 8.85 into 10 raised to the power minus 12 Coulomb square per Newton meter square, and this is the value of K 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, which is equal to 8.99 into 10 raised to the power 9 Newton meter square per Coulomb square, and this epsilon naught, as I told you, is the permittivity constant permittivity constant so if I put the value of k 
I write Coulomb's law as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught u1 u2 by r square. So this is Coulomb's law in scalar form. By scalar form I mean this gives me just the magnitude of the force between two point charges Q1 and Q2 separated by distance r. And in this expression, it is assumed that Q1 and Q2 are placed in vacuum or air. Right? So, what about the direction? Direction of the force is along the line joining the charges. You know that direction of F because force is a vector. So direction of F is along the line joining the charges. So if I have two point charges Q1, Q2 separated by distance R and I am interested in calculating the magnitude of the electric force between them. I have to put the numbers in this expression and solve for F that will give me the magnitude of the charge a force between them and the direction of F is along the line joining the charges, right? And you know the force is repulsive if charges Q1, Q2 are like that means if both they are negative or both are positive and if force, uh, you know force is attractive if the charges are unlike, if Q1 and Q2 are unlike with uh, either Q1 is positive, Q1 negative or the reverse. So in unlike charge case, force will be of attractive nature. So this is Coulomb's law in scalar form. Now you can compare it with the Newton's law of gravity, which is the force law for gravitation. So let me change the color of the background. So in Newton's law, you see if we have two point masses separated by distance r, then the gravitational force between them is g m1 into by r square. The value of g is 6.67 into 10 raised power minus 11 Newton meter square per kilogram square. This is uh, Newton's law of universal gravitation. G is gravitational constant. Direction of this force is also the along the line joining the masses. Now you can see the similarities between gravitational and electrostatic force and dissimilarities also. What are the similarities? First thing you see both forces are inversely proportional to square of the separation distance r square. So this is one similarity, right? So we say sometimes uh, that these equations, these laws are inverse square laws. Inverse square laws. By that we mean the magnitude of the force in both cases is inversely proportional to square of the separation distance. So you, if you double the square of the separation distance force will be reduced by half right that you know what is the meaning of inverse relationship so here it is directly proportional to product of the masses in case of coulomb's law force is directly proportional to the product of charges so the role of charges is same as the role of masses in case of gravitational force right is one more comparison. Another comparison you can see here the constant k has a large value. 
that is 8.99 into 10 is 9 in SI system Newton meter square per coulomb square but the gravitational constant has a small value it is 6.67 into 10 is minus 11 in SI system that is a Newton meter square per kg square because the gravitational force is weak compared to the electrostatic force it indicates that so this is another comparison what is the difference difference what difference is that gravitational force is only attractive but electrostatic force can be attractive as well as repulsive depending on the relative sign of the charges if charges are like it is repulsive if charges are unlike it is attractive right so it is difference so because the interaction is of two kinds in electrostatic force charges are of two kinds but there is only one type of interaction in gravity that is attraction so there is only one kind of mass that is positive this was the simple comparison between the two kinds of forces gravitational and electrostatic there is one more difference that difference is if you have two masses they are in vacuum and you calculate the force between them you get some number now if you change the intervening medium you may place in between m1 and m2 uh, oil some material you may have some brick wall it's not going to change the gravitational force between the masses so we say gravity is not screened that means this force doesn't change due to the intervening medium whatever the medium between the masses force is same gravitational force between two masses is not affected by the intervening medium but in case of electric force if you have two charges in vacuum at certain distance and there is some force between them if you place some material medium between the charges force will change then you have to change this expression that change is incorporated into the equation by taking into consideration the dielectric constant of that particular medium so you can say the force between two charges at a given distance is maximum when the charges are in vacuum when they are placed in some material medium force is reduced and it is reduced by a factor that factor is the same as the dielectric constant of that medium right for example the dielectric constant of water is 81 so if two charges are first placed in vacuum at certain distance there is x newton force between them if same charges at same distance are placed in water the force between them will be x by 81 newton because 81 is the dielectric constant of water right so this is the different another difference between gravity and electrostatic force there is one more similarity which i will point out there is an idea called superposition principle what it means basically it means if you have two masses at certain distance you calculate the force between the masses now you bring some other mass m3 then some other mass m4 you can bring any number of masses let me make it clear m4 then m5 or any number of masses 
the force between two masses m1 and m2 is not going to change by the presence of other masses this is the superposition principle so we say gravity obeys superposition principle i repeat it means the force between two masses is independent of the presence or absence of other masses this superposition principle is also obeyed by the electrostatic force if i have two charges at certain distance in certain medium i find the electrostatic force between them now i bring other charges q3 q4 any number of charges in their neighborhood it is not going to change the force between q1 and q2 right so the electrostatic force also obeys superposition principle or principle of superposition that means the force between two given charges is independent of the presence or absence of other charges right so let me move further as i told you force is a vector quantity so when we express coulomb's law in scalar form it only indicates the magnitude of the force you have to separately uh indicate the direction by saying that direction of f is along the line joining the charges now if you want and another thing force is of uh, two varieties it can be repulsive or attractive that is also not embodied within the equation if we want uh this information what information information about the direction of the force and information about the nature of the force when it is repulsive and when it is attractive within the equation itself then we have to express coulomb's law in vector form so let us write Use the same page first. The next thing is Coulomb's law in vector form. Right. So let this be my Q one. Let this be. Q two, right? Let me use another color here. Now I define a vector R one two. So R one two is a vector pointing from Q two to Q one. That means R one two vector locates Q one relative to Q two. Right now, let F one two be the force on Q one due to Q two. Right, F two one be the force on Q two. Due to your one, some books do the reverse. They represent by F one two the force on two due to your one. They go for F two one. That is not important. Important is you need to define your symbols. I am representing by F one two force on your one due to your two. F two one force on Q two due to Q one. So first subscript indicates the particle on which force is acting. Second subscript indicates the source of force. Another charge, right? So in this diagram, I am taking these charges as like charges. So let they be like. That means they are either. Both positive or both negative. In that case, 
there will be repulsion. So F12 will act on Q1 away from Q1 along the line joining the charge. So this will be F12. Q2 is pushing Q1 radially away because we are talking of light charge and there is repulsion. Now Q1 will push Q2 radially outward and this is the force that is F21. So F21 is acting on 2. This is F21, this is F12. Another thing, I define a unit vector that is R12 cap. So what is R12? It is a unit vector in the direction of R12 vector. Remember, you can define unit vector in any direction. So my R12 unit vector, it, it is what? It is a unit vector in the direction of R12 vector. That means I can write from vector rules R12 unit vector as R12 vector divided by the magnitude of R12 vector, right? So, let us write the expression for F12. Now, F12 can be written as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1, Q2 by R12 square times R12 cap. Understand this equation. We are using the vector rules to express the direction and magnitude of the force. And in the first, C. We know this force has magnitude equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught times the product of the charges divided by the square of the separation distance. Now, separation distance here is the magnitude of R12. So, in the denominator, we write square of the magnitude of R12. Now, we know this force has same direction as the unit vector R12. So, I write here R12 cap because we know this whole thing is a scalar and scalar multiplied by a vector is the vector, right? If this, uh, so this uh, expresses the magnitude of F12 as well as the direction of F12. You can also write it this way. You can write F12 also. 1 by 4 you place the vector. 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 times r12 vector over r12 q. This is the same thing as 1. It contains the same information as 1. See how? Because I can write this r12 unit vector as r12 vector by r12. So I have made that substitution. Instead of r12 cap, I write r12 vector divided by r12. What's I? Q. So this is the same thing. It is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1, q2. It indicates the magnitude is same because r12 uh, in the numerator you have r12 vector. It, the, its magnitude will cancel with one magnitude in the denominator, so remaining will be R12 square and direction is same as the vector R12, right? Now, how we write now F21? It is simple. Let me write using this color. I can write F21 as 
1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 by r12 square times r12 cap and place a minus here. Right. Because it will indicate the magnitude of this force is 1 by 4 by epsilon naught q1 q2 by r12 square. That direction is opposed to that of the r12 cap, which is the same as this situation. So it, it, or you can write it this way. Let me use this color f21 minus 1 by 4 by epsilon naught q1 q2 by r12 cube times r12. This is also correct. There is no issue. This way or this way. Information and in three or you write it this way and in four. It indicates the magnitude as well as the direction. One by four perhaps not q one q two by r square. The magnitude direction indicates is indicated by negative times r one two that is opposite to r one two cap because you know negative scalar times a vector yield is a vector in the opposite direction right so this is also the same when you write the cube then you write here r into vector not unit vector or you can define r21 vector sometimes what we do we define another vector r21 from 1 to 2 if you do it this way also you can define r21 vector and you can define r21 unit vector also. So r21 vector will be located in q2 relative to q1. And r21 unit vector is the unit vector in the direction of in the direction of what? In the direction of r21 vector. Then you can express f21 in terms of r21. This is also possible. You can write, let me use another page. Let me change the background. Let me use this color. So that way you can write F21 as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught to 1 q2 by r21 square into r21 unit vector or you can write f21 as 1 by 4 by epsilon naught q1 to 2 by r21 cube times r21 vector we name it 5 and 6 this is my 5, this is my 6. C, when I write F21 in terms of R21 vector, then there is no need to write minus here because F21 is directed in the direction of R21 or you can say in the direction of R21 unit vector. But when you write it in terms of R12 vector, then you have to write the minus because it is oppositely directed to R12 vector, right? It is in the direction of R21, but oppositely directed to R12, right? So both imply the same thing, whether you write in terms of R12 or in terms of R21. So here you can write R12 in the denominator or R21, there is no issue because the magnitude of R12 and R21 is the same. There is only direction which differs then. So from 1, 2, or 3 and 4, or you can use 5 and 6, you can see F12 is minus times F21. 
what does that mean that means these two forces are an action reaction pair they have same magnitude they have opposite direction compare the expression for f12 with the expression for f21 in any form whether you use this and this in the unit vector notation or you use the vector r12 r21 or r12 r12 in all situations you see f12 is having same magnitude as f21 but they are oppositely directed so they are action reaction pair that's why in the diagram i have uh, uh, made these lengths equal because length of the vector indicates the magnitude and they are oppositely directed this is to the left this is to the right right this is how we express the coulomb's law in vector form the one thing you need to understand i told you it indicates the magnitude as well as the direction now see it also uh, indicates the nature of the force when it is like and when it is unlike see if these charges are we wrote the expression for like charges when charges are like both are positive or both are negative but the sign here will be positive here it will be positive here it will be positive here it is negative it is not negative because of the sign of the charge this negative is because f21 is oppositely directed to r12 cap now see if the charges are uh, unlike charges there will be attraction that means let me draw this figure if this is the one this was my q2 then i defined vector r12 like this this was my r12 vector this was my r21 vector and then there are corresponding unit vectors this is r12 this is r21 right now if the charges are unlike when charges are unlike one possibility is q1 is positive q2 is negative product is negative right uh, second possibility is the reverse q2 is q first i said q1 is positive q2 is negative or the reverse in both cases the product of the charges will be a negative thing what will happen forces will reverse compared to the repulsion situation now f12 will be th this way this will be f12 and this will be f21 now this reversal of the forces is also indicated in the equations expressed in vector form see how when q1 q2 are unlike charges product is negative here you will get one minus here that minus will reverse this f12 and similarly whether you write it this way or this way you are going to get one minus here this minus will turn into plus because when q1 q2 product is negative for unlike charges there will be one more negative this negative negative will become positive this direction of f21 will be also reverse that means when you express the coulomb's law in vector form direction of magnitude uh, information about the magnitude sorry uh, it indicates the magnitude it indicates the direction it also indicates that like charges repel and unlike charges attract right i hope it is clear to you i stop here so today now let me summarize we discuss coulomb's law we compare it with the newton's law of gravity we talked about superposition principle and we expressed coulomb's law in vector form i hope it is all clear to you 
do not forget to like share and subscribe my channel you can give comment in the comment box thank you god bless you assalamu alaikum